Hello, Graceway Church. As we mentioned last weekend, we are happy to announce that we're planning to begin regathering the church beginning next Sunday, June 7th, here at Graceway. We're going to be offering two one-hour lawn services at 9 o'clock and 1045. As we talked with people, I think everyone's unified in their desire to get back together, but diversified in how we should do that, as well as our readiness to do that. Some because of health concerns or age or their responsibility for others cannot return yet. And we vary greatly in terms of what precautions we think are are necessary in order to return. So elders determined that we wanted to make sure we were ministering to the full spectrum of people in the church, all those different groupings, all across the spectrum, as best we could, until we can all be back together. So the plan we settled on was to offer different venues with different levels of precautions taken. Think of it as three different venues, home, gym, and sanctuary. First, home. Some of you will need to maintain the maximum precautions afforded by staying at home. And and likewise, for the health and safety of everyone gathering, if you have symptoms of illness or have been recently exposed to a possible or confirmed case of COVID-19, please stay home. We've invested in some new equipment in order to begin live streaming weekly and then saving a recording of that service so it can be viewed at a later time. Know that we're learning something every week how to do this. Until we get all of the equipment here, get the computer built, learn the software which will allow us to overlay graphics on the fly, we may take a step backwards in terms of being able to project song lyrics or PowerPoint slides. Please bear with us for a couple weeks. We're, we're going to get this up and running. But here's the point. We're, we're going to begin live streaming the 9 a.m. service every week starting next Sunday. And you can watch it live from the safety of your home. Or if you miss it at 9, you can watch a recording of it at a later time or even re-watch it later in the week. I think this is going to enhance our ministry and extend our reach. So that's the first venue, your own home. The second venue is the gym. We're going to replay the service that's occurring in the sanctuary on the big screen down there. We're going to bring padded pew chairs down. We'll have a staff member or elder hosting this location to welcome and shepherd people. We'll have an usher and a technician to assist with this gathering, but know that we'll implement extra precautions in the gym for those who would prefer that. What do I mean? We're going to make an extra effort to reduce the incidence of aerosolized particles that come from our mouths when speaking or preaching or singing. So there'll be fewer people in that space, and we're asking everyone in that venue to wear a mask or face covering. I won't be physically in the room preaching loudly for 35 minutes. There won't be a live worship team in the gym. We're going to ask this group to not sing out loud. And in addition to other cleaning of touch points and restrooms that we'll be doing everywhere between services, we're going to switch out the chairs in the gym between the two services. So if you choose to come to the gym, even for the second service, you can know that these extra precautions are being taken in that space. We recognize that the gym is less accessible. And if you need it, please use the elevator in the foyer to to go there. We chose to use the gym for these added precautions because the platform, the instruments, the technology is all in the sanctuary. So that's where we felt we needed to do things live. The sanctuary is the third venue. Preaching will be done in both services. Music will be live in the first service and a recording played back in the second service. While masks are encouraged, we're not going to require them in the sanctuary venue. Know that those on the platform addressing the audience will not be wearing a mask so that we can be clearly understood. 
and, and we won't be attempting to switch out chairs between the services. So three venues, three different levels of precaution, one full spectrum of the church. I want you to take a quick tour so you can know what to expect before you arrive. In an effort to maintain six feet distance between household groupings, We have to limit the number of participants in each venue and each service. To avoid exceeding our limits, we're asking you to sign up online for the particular service and location that you want to attend, telling us how many are in your party. And if you're not able to sign up online, just just call the church office during weekdays. We'll get you signed up. Once you sign up, you'll receive an email with instructions how to change your reservation if need be. Once a venue is full, though, you'll have to pick from a different time or location. We've set up chairs and clusters, and your registration will allow us to anticipate groupings, but if need be, we'll help shuffle some chairs as necessary. As you arrive or exit, feel free to drop off your offering in the newly installed wooden offering boxes. Or you may want to take advantage of our new online giving and text giving options. Find more about that under the giving menu at our website. When you arrive, you'll find hand sanitizing stations. If you have your own sanitizer in the car, great, use it. But if not, we'd encourage you to sanitize when you arrive and again as you leave. We'll have a limited supply of disposable masks available if you need or desire one. Practice social distancing. Don't get all bunched up at the entrance. Use non-touch greetings. We've made an effort to reduce common shared touch points. So weather permitting, we'll be propping open doors. We won't be passing the offering bags and communion will be done differently. We've removed the Bibles from the pew chairs. The water fountains will be closed. And we know coffee, no bulletins, no pens, no name tags, no info cards, no brochures, no children's activity packets. So we need you to bring your own supplies with you and then take them home with you. Pen, paper, Bible, your own water bottle, maybe some crayons and paper or some activity for the kids. At the outset here, we will not have children's ministry on Sunday mornings. So no nursery and no children's church. We hope to be able to add that in the future as we're able. We recognize we're going to have to add ministries back one layer at a time as we can staff it and and determine protocols. And We're just not ready with that one yet. We're going to ease our way back into this. Congregational singing will be minimal to begin with and will occur later in the service so we can exit soon afterwards. We're going to encourage people not to linger in the building but to move outside into fresh air and to maintain social distance as you reconnect with people across the hood of your car. We're going to ask you not to run over to the other venue's parking lot to to catch up with people. Here's the deal. We're creating another venue, not only so that we can accommodate more seating, not only so we can offer some additional precautions, but so that we would limit any potential spread of the virus. If someone's asymptomatic when they were present on Sunday and then show symptoms and test positive later in the week, we want to limit that exposure to only one group, not both. The only way that works is if we truly maintain two separate venues. So each venue has their own parking, their own entry doors, their own restrooms. I know you're not going to get to see everyone you want to see. I just encourage you to make an extra effort to call them and catch up. It's not everything we want. But it's a start in the right direction. And Lord willing, as We continue to monitor what's taking place here locally and in the surrounding counties. We can progressively add more elements that will make this feel more normal. 
In the meantime, as we make preparations in the building, I encourage all of us to make preparations in our hearts. I said last week, if, if our congregation mirrors the larger society, then it will contain a broad spectrum of strongly held convictions regarding the process and the timing of regathering. The potential for offense at one another is enormous. If you missed it, I urge you to listen to the May 24th communion meditation on church unity. You can go to gracewaysockprairie.org and find it on our virtual Sundays page. Now, it's, it's not everything we want, but hey, we're, we're followers of Christ. We're following a man. We're modeling our lives on a man who sacrificed himself and his own interests for the benefit of others. Not my will, he said, but yours be done, Father. And if we're going to follow him, then self-sacrifice, putting the interests of others ahead of our own, would be part of our practice. Church, this is not the time to give in to selfishness or bitterness or partisanship. Instead, this is our hour to look and behave like Jesus. So let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Looking forward to starting the process. And may we all be together soon.